solitude of the open sea, the magic of its sights and sounds, the challenge beyond the horizon. for sure, for they follow different dreams. Some to be alone with their families and with nature, some for the spice of adventure, some to seek distant waters and peoples and cultures. If you've been following along with my story, this is a 1974 West Cell 32. Not many boats are bulletproof, but this heavy displacement cutter comes pretty close. It's probably in the class of something like a Tiana. It is a cutter sloop, that is to say it has two head cells. It has a staysail as well as a more comprehensive jib or a Yankee, all of which gives you a versatile sail plan depending on the prevailing weather conditions. The staysail self tending so it can act like a mainsail. So if you follow along in other episodes, we've sandblasted down to basically the base layer. It had years and years of ablative paint. Um, this flaking here is, is really not, uh, not, not that big of a deal. Uh, we can come through and fix all the punctures, maybe get the last of this little layer off. But the soda blasting did not get down to the fiberglass, which I've seen done. And I've also seen where uh, the set of blasting will just get here to the, the very um, original. Here we have all the materials to come through and patch up a lot of the punctures. And this flaking that's left is not a real problem. You know, there's no bubbles found throughout the entire process. There's a few punctures. So kind of what's left here is just the last layer of paint Kill is a very slack kill, and that really gives you a lot more space on the inside and tons of storage here. We have the through holes throughout. Uh, we have the intake for the head into the holding tank, which I'll show you on the inside. Here's the uh, where we can pump it out once we're far enough out to sea. We have other through holes. This is for the galley sink. We have bilge, where we can pump out for the bilge pump. We have the 
through hole for the engine. Over here we have another through hole for the bilge as well as uh, drains for the cockpit. I'll show you a little bit about that. So again, some more of the flaking. Not concerned about that, not a big deal. The rudder looks in great shape. There's a few of these punctures here. They've been drying out for a um, month, month and a half. So it's time to finally patch these up. So we'll re-glass them. And come through here, we'll re-glass this there and it'll all be ready. Been asked to what about antifoul? Antifoul will be added once I splash down. I'll get the boot top painted. Probably keep it here in this blue. And you can see the water line indicated by the boot top. And the longer this is, the faster the boat. So two things now that we're back forward. We have the bob stay. This is a, quite a focal point for some weeping, but it still seems to be in really good shape. I know with barnacles, a lot of that was blasted off. The bob stay is a strut and it holds the bowsprit. The west cell is a very deep boat forward. You see how the double ender design, very canoe-like hull. By being a very deep boat forward, it allows it to power through the seas. We'll talk more about the notoriety of the west cell to handle all sea states. So back to the kill before we go topside, there's 7,000 pounds of lead in her. So she's gonna be a solid, heavy boat. Uh, there's heavy displacement that helps reduce capsize vulnerability, makes it comfortable. The West cells are, I mean, they're notorious for this. They're notoriously safe. And it has a great blue water capabilities in seaway. And when you're, when you're up against heavier wind and wave conditions, this is a well-ballast boat, heavy blue water boat. You're off the trance on the rudder. positioned and hung. So this propeller is about to be removed. It belongs to the Volva Penta that's currently about to be taken out as well. But that Volva Penta is being removed. It has a left-handed prop. And I've ordered a new prop. It came in yesterday. And as I repowered this West Cell with a Beta Marine 38, that requires a right-handed prop. And it looks like the sacrificial zinc is all but missing. Heading top side, we start aft. We have the cockpits very comfortable. Tiller steering, a lot of hurricane damage to the tiller, but I do have a spare. It's draining, easy access to the engine, shore power. One idea I do have for the cockpit ability to wash down with fresh water, clean the boat, clean fish, so on. One of the changes I do want to make with the cockpit here aft is, a, is to fix the push pit railing here at the stern of the boat. And then you spend a lot of time here, you want it to be comfortable, but more importantly, you want it to be safe. 
You're looking at the lazarette. That's the storage locker after the cockpit. This is the garage of the boat. You know, the hatch is leaking. Some, we'll repair that. But there's lots of room. Uh, this locker had extra chains and rope. I believe a few drogues. Tools in this area. And we'll just have to organize it a little bit better. But figure out how to, to use this access. Now, I may even need to get in here to replace the self-steering. So we'll video that if we need to. I think any any tools or spare parts that were here, I'm going to relocate that so I can have all my tools in one spot. So lots to figure out with this space. A final idea for now, though, is to add cowl vent for the engine. I just like the idea of being able to seal it from underneath with a weatherproof cover. But as you can tell, the boat doesn't have much uh, ability to f to send air through the cabin beneath or into the engine room. I do have a wind scoop. I know that that can be helpful. Lastly, here in the cockpit, new instruments, uh, new instrument panels will go in. I like to figure out how to get those behind plexiglass or plastic, which is what I see often on other boats. I do have some ideas. I definitely want a pedestal. I would love to have all my nav gear and instruments right there where I can easily see it. They are currently positioned on an arm that swivels in a companion way. I, that that worked. I mean, it wasn't a big problem, but I do think that um, for boats that don't have a soft or hard dodger, that is something that should probably be changed. And I, I would want to do that as well. So I, I, believe, I believe it may even come down to potentially having well, I definitely want a Dodger. I think that's going to be the, a great option for this refit. Final note here aft is that the West Cell has a single backstay. As far as I understand it, one design change many boat owners on the go to fix this point of failure is to split those backstays. It does involve glassing in a uh, chain plate, one that is a little different than those along the port and starboard side of the boat. I'm on the waiting list for that and that will possibly be a future episode. Head and below, we have 6-1 headroom, teak cabinets, teak sole, all needing a little bit of cleanup. Really, after a hurricane, not a lot of mold. So that's good. Got the galley. So we have a propane gimbaled stove ice chest and i've seen a lot of conversions where they can use some of the more modern freezer plates because this is quite a mess and so the install will be here on the back and they run access to freezer plate you can remotely adjust the the temp that's inside it other people they've just been taking this ice chest and you just use it for your dry goods cans so forth so there's a sink it needs a new pump but it'd be nice to have a manual foot pump down here and then of course you can have access to all the plumbing and to 
Here we can remove the steps and get access to the engine. Which we'll be doing here soon to remove it. We got the chart table, electronics, comms, radios. We'll be adjusting a lot of this, but a lot of space underneath here. As you can tell, I love the kind of tool cabinet. Everything's been gutted. Got another little locker here. Way back in there. My plan is maybe to make this a dedicated emergency locker. I do want a specific emergency locker with all the gear I would need. I'm not sure yet how I'm gonna organize that, but I, I want my systems well organized. Life jackets, extra lights, uh, anything I'll need for emergency. This could be a dedicated tool area. You know, uh, this was previously used for all the engine fluids. They're maybe relocating that. So a nice little galley. Real bright, especially with the hatch open and great shape here in the main salon we have the dinette table that's in my garage right now and it can fold down this could be a bunk then on the right side we have two a lower and an upper bunk tons of storage remember we mentioned there's a very slack keel so all these cabinets underneath And I think I have bunker boards. Here's a fabric one. No, but these are the bunker berths. Is the V-Birth. Lots of storage in here. Storage under the step. Access to the chain locker. The overhead hatch. The overhead that I mentioned earlier doesn't seem to be leaking anymore. It's been raining for... Alright, that's two weeks. And it could be the crazing on the opposite side of this port window it could be a cap rail this has leaks somewhere it'll be simply trying to figure that out but lots of space up here there's a lot of neat little designs 32 owners will do as far as having a, a, a supported board that crosses over here but you know, sleeping on this side, you have quite a bit of room. And then this one tends to be just for storage. Neat adjustments up front here. Again, we have where the Samson post were removed. So we'll reinforce that with some glass. This is a West Cell feature, water collection here on the windows. Literally on all of them, see that picks up. And the remedy, believe it or not, is wax. That will really heal this sucker over. But it's going to be neat trying to figure out how to organize all of this storage. Tons of space. This could be a little bookshelf. I think I've shown this before. It leans up and snaps in a little bit of history here we'll hang on to that now here's the head it's nice about this close you can 
lock it from the other side. Have a little bit of privacy. So sink that works. Toilet. I don't know. But here in this linen storage, you have a ton of space, honestly, to maybe move the holding tank. We do a lot of this plumbing. Also throughout the deck, reapplying the non-skid to help with any traction when it's wet. So lots of space underway and the stanchions and safety lines, they'll all need to be repaired or replaced. The bulwarks here, that's one of my favorite features of the West Cell. It really allows that extension on the side of the deck, above the level of the deck, that really uh, makes you feel a lot safer when you're underway trying to move to the fore deck or move aft. My final thoughts, the West Cell is a well-ballasted blue water boat. It's notoriously safe, has great capabilities in the seaway, especially when you're up against heavier wind and wave conditions or confused sea states. And it is ultra heavy. And that does take more power to drive the boat to its nominal hull speed, which is why it's jokingly called the West Snail. But I think, you know, there's a lot of articles out there where Sailors have been able to maintain good speeds with a balanced sail plan.